God's heart is to bless you. Just let that sink in a minute. God's heart is to bless you. You know, if you go all the way back to the beginning, when God created humanity, he created them in his image, he created them male and female, and then the first thing he did is he blessed them. And you're going to read that today, if you haven't already, today and this week, as we go get into Genesis. God's original intention for humanity was image-bearing. You are made to show off God. To wherever you go, God's fingerprints are on you. You are made for fruitfulness. God has blessed you and humanity with fruitfulness, with multiplication, with filling and governing the earth, with abundance of provision. From the very first things that God spoke over us, he was speaking blessing over you and over humanity. So I want to say it again. God's heart is to bless you. That's what he wants. That's his plan. That's what he wants for you. But sadly, humanity has continually turned away from God. So God chose one man, Abram. We know him better as Abraham, which his name was changed to later. And, and God promised to bless the world through him and his descendants. In Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3, is written this story where God kind of breaks into Abraham's life and he says to him, leave your native country. It would be like God coming to you if you were born here and saying, leave America. And you just start leaving and I will show you where. That's, that's how it was for Abraham. God said, leave your native country, your relatives, your father's family, go to the land that I will show you and I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. Now, can you just imagine being Abraham and having God uh, come to you and tell you this? I have chosen you above everybody else, and I'm going to bless the whole world. Every family on earth is going to be blessed through you and your descendants. That's pretty amazing. A huge, huge blessing that God spoke. But today I want to talk to you about having the faith of Abraham positions you to live in the blessing of Abraham. Having the faith of Abraham, it gets you situated, it gets you into position to live in the blessings of Abraham in your life. Abraham put his faith in God. That's what he is famous for. And God blessed him. And when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, God blesses you. And I'm going to drill down even a little bit more specifically. The Apostle Paul, one of the early church leaders, wrote in Galatians 3.29, And now that you belong to Christ, you are the true children of Abraham. You are his heirs. And God's promise to Abraham belongs to you. This is very good news. This is very good news. So I'm not talking about positivity. I'm not talking about name it and claim it. I'm not talking about if, if you think it, you can be it. I'm talking about Bible. The Bible says if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, if you have put your faith in him, if you're in the kingdom of God, you are Abraham's heir, period. It's very clear. <laughs> and God's promise to Abraham belongs to you. Would everybody just say, to me? To me. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you, people. I'm talking about me. And I, I saw four truths uh, about Abraham's faith, which is the kind of faith that God blesses. And those, the, this will help us to get into position for a blessed life in 2023 and beyond. So I don't know about you, I want a blessed life. I want a blessed life. Anybody here want a blessed life? Say amen. amen. Yes, I don't want a cursed life. I, I don't think anybody wants that. I want a blessed life. And I want to know what God blesses, and I want to do that. Does that make sense? So four truths I see. And so today I'm just, just talking about blessed faith, blessed life. That's the title of my message today. Blessed faith, blessed life. The first truth I see, blessed faith begins with God's promises. It doesn't begin with your wants. It doesn't begin with your strategies. Blessed faith begins with God's promises. It starts there. It says, what has God said in his word? That's what I'm going to put my faith in. 
what God said. And that is what God blesses. That is blessed faith. Begins, starts at, originates in God's promises. So now, for example, Abram, or Abraham, as we know him, he was very old when God gave him this promise that he was going to have children and so many children. It was going to bless the whole world through one of his children eventually. It was this amazing promise. But Abraham was too old to have kids. And his wife, uh, he wasn't too old to have kids, but he was old. I'll say it that way. His wife was barren. And that was probably the more, um, the more uh, apparent obstacle that they saw. His wife was barren. Sarah was barren. And yet God said, Abraham and Sarah, you're going to have descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky or the sand on the seashore. In Genesis 15, chapter, or verse 6, Abram believed the Lord. He put his faith in God's promise. And the Lord counted him as righteous because of his faith. So Abraham did not look at his circumstances and say, well, it's impossible. My wife's barren. So this is an impossible promise. This promise. He, did not, he did not say that. He said, Lord, I believe. And there were a few times when Abraham said, uh, God, it doesn't seem like you're getting with the program. Where's that blessing you told me? Uh, am I going to just have to you know, have a family through a servant or something? And God said, no. That is not the plan. You just be patient. You believe in me. You believe the promise. And there is something for us to learn there. Your life is blessed when your faith rests on God's promises, not on your own position. Your life is blessed when, you, when your faith rests on God's promises, not your own position, your own situation. So go with what God says about you, not what your circumstances say, not what your doctor says, not what your bank account says, not what your parents says, not what your teacher says about you. That does not define or limit your life. Your life is blessed when your faith rests on God's promises. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, For we live by believing and not by seeing. We live by believing, not by seeing. Other translations say we walk by faith and not by sight. When things go wrong, it'll be all right. <laughs> There's an old song that says that. When you have the kind of faith that God blesses, you live a blessed life. Blessed faith begins with God's promises, and it results in a blessed life. So Abraham didn't say, well, I'm limited, so God must be limited. He said, I got some limits, but my God is unlimited. And God did come through it for him. It took a while. God had a, he had a plan. God, he brought him through many years of testing and trials. But God, God's promise did come to pass in Abraham's life. A second truth I see, blessed faith takes action. And not just action, but obedient action. Blessed faith takes obedient action. Abraham's faith was active, not passive. When God first appeared to Abraham, the story is in Genesis 12, he, he did not simply believe what God promised. He didn't just mentally go, okay, I believe it. But he acted on it right away. God said, if you will leave your country and your family and your relatives and go where I tell you to go, I will show you once you start, I will bless you. Abraham said, I'm going. God said, move. Abraham started packing. Like he, he was an active faith. And there is a link between walking in obedience to God and walking in blessing to God. Did you hear that? There's a link between walking in obedience to God and walking in the blessing of God. Uh, so a Abraham, in order to receive God's blessing, he had to move. That's, that's what God was calling him to do. And God also calls you to put your faith into action. In the New Testament, James chapter 2, verse 22, James was writing about Abraham, which I love. I love how the New Testament goes back and gives us light on the Old Testament. What was the meaning there? What was God trying to show us there? And James in 2.22 said, You see, Abraham's faith, his faith and his actions worked together. His actions made his faith complete. His actions made his faith complete. Complete. I have in mind to bring this forward in another message series in the new year sometime. We'll see when God clears me to do that. But there's just something powerful here. And I wonder if some of us are stuck because we have not taken that one simple action that God asked you to take. 
I wonder if, if, there is a, if there's a backlog of blessings just waiting for you to actually obey and waiting for me to actually obey. James said that if you, have, if you truly have faith in God, your faith will affect your actions, or listen to this, or you don't have faith at all. You are not saved. That is hard, and that's Bible. Wow, if you have faith, it's going to change how you live, or you don't have faith. That's, James was saying, I want you to be able to define it and see if you have faith or not. James said, if you don't have actions, you don't have faith. Wow, so I want to live the kind of blessed life, that I, I want to have the blessed faith that leads to a blessed life, and that's what I want for you as well. Abraham's obedience changed the world. It changed the world because he obeyed. Jesus came through his line. Like, that is amazing. Uh, here's here's a, a third truth I see. Blessed faith withholds nothing from God. Blessed faith holds, withholds nothing from God. And there is an element of faith in giving. There is an element, element of faith in surrender, as we've been singing about today. There's an ele- because we're saying, God, I'm vulnerable I'm vulnerable. I'm giving myself to you. I'm surrendering uh, what I have to you. That takes faith. And God blessed Abraham with wealth, with fame, with success in military in battles. He, he wasn't even like a, an army guy. But he, there, there was a situation where his extended family got in trouble. There was a little war that breaks out. And God gives him military success. God gave Abraham community standing. But most importantly, God miraculously enabled Abraham and Sarah to have a son, Isaac, to be his heir. That is amazing. So Abraham surrenders everything to God. God blesses him in every way, including giving him the son. And so Isaac is this very blessed son, this very blessed child of Abraham and Sarah. It was the, he was the child of of promise, the child that everything hinges upon. There was going to be no Jesus if there was not an Isaac, at least not in Abraham's line. Do you get it? Like he had to have that, he had to have that first son of promise. And so everything is riding on Isaac. Let's keep Isaac safe. Let's keep him well fed. Isaac, he is the man that all the miracles are going to come through because it is Abraham's first son of promise. And then one day, God says, Abraham, I want you to give him up. I want you to take your son, Isaac, your unique son, Isaac. I want you to offer him as a burnt offering of sacrifice to God. This is not characteristic of God to to say a child sacrifice. That's not how God does it. But in this instance, with the man that's going to be most blessed of any man on earth, God said, I want you to give me your son. So what do you think Abraham did? He said, oh no, God, anything but that, can you take this? No. He said, okay, we go in the morning. He starts, he says, servants, let's get ready. Get some wood, get some fire, get a knife. Isaac, come on, we're taking a little trip, and we're going to go worship. He got up early the next morning. I love that detail that the Bible gives us. He did not stall. He went at the first light. Okay, I'm going. God says go. I'm going. Now, Isaac was a young man by this time. We always think that maybe he was like a two-year-old or something. No. No, he is older than that. I don't know his exact age. Say teenager or more? So he probably had to cooperate with Abraham to get up on that altar. So it's very possible that the two of them we're giving his life to God. So as he gets up there, he's tied up, he's on top of the wood, ready for it to be a burnt offering. Abraham raises his knife to say, God, you asked for my one and only son, my unique son, Isaac. I'm giving him to you now. Here I go. And Jesus shows up as the angel of the Lord and says, stop. And I love what it says, the story is in Genesis 22, verse 12. And, and Jesus says to him, don't lay a hand on the boy, the angel said. Do not hurt him in any way, for now I know that you truly fear 
God, you have not withheld from me even your son, your only son. Verse, skipping down to verse 16, this is what the Lord says, because you have obeyed me and have not withheld even your son, your only son, I swear by my own name that I will certainly bless you. Abraham had made a lot of mistakes in his life. Trust me. But when it counted, he, he withheld nothing from God. He said, I will certainly bless you. I will multiply your descendants beyond number. Like the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore, your descendants will conquer the cities of their enemies. And through your descendants, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. Be, all because you have obeyed me. Oh my goodness. Blessed faith withholds nothing from God. Abram was willing to offer up his son, the son of promise, to God as a burnt offering. And how many times do we struggle to give $10 to the kingdom of God or to share our home with someone in need or to loan your car or to give some clothes or to buy a present? Like, oh my goodness, that is nothing compared to what Abraham was called to do. And there is a link between having an open hand toward God and walking in the blessing of God. Like I say, it is, it is uncharacteristic. God, God does not, just, he doesn't ask for child, physical child sacrifice. That's, that's not what he's doing typically. But um, there is a link between just saying, God, whatever you want of mine is yours. Whatever. It's, it's yours. Take my house my kids, my job, my reputation. It's yours, Lord. There's a link between having an open hand towards God and walking in the blessing of God. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 and 10, it says, honor the Lord with your wealth. Where did you get that wealth? Let's think about that. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce. Then he will fill your barns with grain and your vats will overflow with good wine. It's, it's spoken in kind of agricultural language because that was the language when this was written. That was the, the uh, environment. But the principle is this. Honor the Lord with the first part, with the best part of everything you produce, your time, your talents, your treasure, everything, and he will give you abundance. So am I a prosperity preacher? I am. If preaching the Bible makes me a prosperity preacher, then I guess I am because I just read Bible. <laughs> the promise is honor the Lord and he will bless you. That is the promise. Amen. I want it. Great. And that's what I want for you as well. I want all of God's blessing. I have a friend who's a pastor that we used to work with and he was at McDonald's with his five-year-old son at the time. He was five-year-old then. And they had just got lunch. They sat down at the table and uh, our pastor friend reaches over and takes one of his french fries, of his, his son's french fries. He had his own, but he took one of his. And the son said, no, that's mine. You can't have that. And I'll never forget his thunderous preacher-like response. I could bury you in french fries. <laughs> it's not that I want to take your french fries. I just want to enjoy them with you. I gave you those fries. And that's how God is with us. He could bury you in french fries. He doesn't need your french fry. But he loves it when you give him your french fries. He loves that. Yes. Blessed faith withholds nothing from God and results in a blessed life. And the last truth, blessed faith shares the blessings with others. So I just talked about having an open hand towards God. This is talking about having an open hand towards others. Blessed faith shares the blessings of God with others. So a scarcity mentality thinks, hey, the pie is only so big. If I give you my piece of pie, I don't got no pie. Because there's only so much. God only has so many blessings. So if I give my blessings away, I lose and someone else wins. And I'm American. I don't want that. That's scarcity mentality. Abundance mentality says God can always grow the pie. So there will always be enough for everyone to be blessed. Proverbs 11.24 says, Give freely and become more wealthy. That does not make sense. And it goes on to say, Be stingy and lose everything. That does not make sense. That's because in the kingdom of God, it does not operate according to human principles. 
It operates according to God's principles. Give freely and become more wealthy because that's what God blesses. Be stingy and lose everything because that's not what God blesses. In the kingdom of God, giving is gaining. Giving is gaining. When Abraham's family and his wealth were growing, there, there came this time when they were, there was too many people, their flocks were multiplying, their families were multiplying, they had more servants, everything was going great, and they needed to just sort of part ways and, and kind of divide up, take different parts of the land. So Abraham says to his nephew Lot, who was also getting prosperous and wealthy, Lot, I'm going to give you first choice of the best part of the land. You just take whatever part of the land you want first. And so Lot chose the beautiful, well-watered valley. It was the best-looking land. It just happened to also be the land where the most wicked people were. Sodom and Gomorrah was there. Uh, but I, I just took note of the fact that Abraham, who he is the one who should have been the honored one, he was the elder, he said, I'm going to give away the first-choice land. You take it, Lot. And he had an open hand towards Lot. And Abram took the remaining land. He took what was left. He built an altar there, and he worshiped the Lord. And God blessed Abraham again. That story is in Genesis 13. God blesses you for a holy purpose. You are blessed to be a blessing to others. And over my years as a pastor, I have noticed that it's not always the wealthiest who are the most generous. In fact, frequently, I have seen a pattern where those who don't seem to have as much of this world's goods are the most generous with the little that they do have. They are the ones who welcome in a foster child. They are the ones who take in those in need. It's amazing to me that uh, it's the heart, it's not the amount. It's the heart. Jesus himself said it is more blessed to give than to receive. It's Acts 20, 35. It's more blessed to give than to receive. So blessed faith shares your blessings with others and results in a blessed life. 